Are you ready to do some course of love? Yeah. 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 All right, I'm going to start out by doing a quick review of some questions I want to ask you from last week that you don't have to answer. So that's easy, but I want you to, but it'll bring us up to, up to where we are right now. And uh, one of the questions is, what is, from uh, the one we just finished, The Full Life, one of the questions is, what is one of the hardest things to believe that, and it said, the course of love said that effort is not called for. That, that one of the hardest things for us to believe is that, that we could accomplish things without effort. Then, then how can you receive your heart's desires? That's what everybody always asks. How can I receive my heart's desires? The course of love says, by accepting what this is saying. <laughs> by the acceptance of these words, by the acceptance of the truth that we say that we want to believe. Do you know that happiness does not require you to define it? Do you know that happiness doesn't need you to put a name to it before it can be yours? I'm just putting these questions out. Do you know that you don't have to know what your happiness is in order to have it? Do you know the first thing you need to do to have happiness? The first thing you need to do to have happiness? Do you know that the first thing you need to do to have happiness is to stop trying to put a name on it? Especially a person's name. <laughs> Especially a person's name. Have you ever put the name of happiness on a person's name? Yeah, it's like you don't pray for happiness, you pray for that person. Because you put a name on it. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. There's some more chairs downstairs if you need it. Or you can plop down on the floor or you know it's a, we, we really informal I found out the I found the secret to a full class put them in a closet <laughs> <laughs> took, it only took 11 years dude oh uh, yeah I want to uh, you know you don't have to believe this except this welcome it some of it's going to be hard to believe. Some of it's going to be quite startling. Um, are we clear that you don't have to believe it or welcome it or accept it? Mm -hmm. Is that cool? All right, so what happens with that is that gives us the opportunity to just hear it. It's amazing. When you, when you don't have to believe something, how you hear it? <laughs> you know. Um, are you not ready to listen to a new voice? Are you not ready to listen to a new voice? Do you know that this course of love is nothing but a trigger? <laughs> These words are meant to trigger you. So if, this is, if, if we do this right, it'll trigger us. And trigger us to what? It says trigger you to know that the time is now. The time has come. Show time. <laughs> Dress rehearsals are over. <laughs> this is it. Wow. <laughs> Breathe. Uh, how is your show coming along? <laughs> is it the best drama that's ever been created in the history of mankind? <laughs> Can't put, words to it. can't even put words to it, right? I know it. I know it. But it I even I, I I even have my own theme song. <laughs> <laughs> Love boat. 
No, Twilight Zone. I wake up in the morning, that's what I hear. That's what I hear. I used to do that when I was a kid. Because, uh, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, uh, I couldn't believe this. It just seemed like it wasn't real to me. Surreal. Yeah, it, it always seemed surreal to me. It looked like a play. It looked like this great big serial play, like on the television show. I used to have this, all those soap operas and stuff. And so when I was a kid, I'd wake up in the morning, and then I would first thing I would do is I had a theme song, you know, that, that I'd play. Mm -hmm. And then I would uh, say, The Adventures of the Purdy Family, <laughs> starring Joe, my father, George, and my mother, George, my other brother, Joe, my next brother, Earlene, my sister, De Carol, and my other sister, Dolores, my other sister, and Donna, my other sister, and starring Earl Purdy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd follow him around all day. And when they'd be in the house and they'd be talking to their boyfriend and they'd be up there, Rule, I can't believe I saw you in the gym with her. And then I would be standing behind my sister going, ta-da! And they'd like run me out of the room or whatever, you know. Because it's a big drama. And somewhere along the line, we've forgotten. We are the actors who have forgotten that we're acting and now we think the play is real. And so books like this trigger us to remember that we're not the victim of the world we see. We're the creators of the life that we're living ourselves, that is coming from us. It's not coming from somebody outside ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's not even coming from Republicans mm -hmm. or Democrats. Mm -hmm. I know it. Yeah. <laughs> I've gone too far now, haven't I? Because we all know the Republicans and Democrats determine our fate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and certainly Wall Street. <laughs> What can you let the worries of today leave your mind? Can you let the disappointments of yesterday go and be no more? Can you let the planning for the future cease? Biggie. Can you be still? As you know, Americans are so friggin' busy. Can, can you be still? I mean, I'm proud of us. For Americans to sit in a room for an hour, relatively quiet and still, is quite an accomplishment. Because we're busy. We're the busiest people on earth. We're busy people. We got lots to do. I have to schedule my pee break two weeks in advance. <laughs> I'm going to go pee at 2.25 p.m. next Thursday. Because I'm a busy American. I got stuff to do. I'm creating my experience. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you try to you try to get with your friends. You have to schedule it three weeks out. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I remember good old days when you could actually see your friend the same day you wanted to. That don't happen nowadays. <laughs> it's, it's the truth. It really doesn't. In both cases, unless you're the special one. Now, we will make time for the special one. <laughs> but you're going to earn it, doggone it. <laughs> you're going to pay for every bit of that attention you get. <laughs> you're the special one, but you're going to pay. <laughs> uh, uh, do you know that the next step is the step of living from love? Do you know that there is no need to sit around and wait for the time of celebration to come? <sighs> Woo! Ah. <sighs> Did you know that you could have a great day with no disappointment or planning? This is an invitation to meet yourself and find yourself within this day. I'm inviting you to meet yourself and find yourself in this day. Not, not, another, not tomorrow, not next week, not after the next thing that you get accomplished. The Spirit is telling us you could meet yourself today. You could find yourself within this day because actually you are finding yourself within this day. In this day is where you're located. I know, if it's not a happy day, you'd be wanting to get out of it, but you in it. <laughs> Sorry, you're in this day.
And you can't mm-hmm. waste time, but you can let time waste you. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. So to find yourself within this day, the course of love says to meet yourself within this day, it does not require new plans. Doesn't require new plans. Doesn't require new plans. It doesn't require new plans. It doesn't ask you to make any decisions. So let's just chill for an hour. Nobody's asking you to make a decision. Nobody's asking you to plan and make a, come up with any new plans right now. Ah, then it says, the invitation does not ask that you do anything new. I'm not asking you to do anything new. Uh, this is an invitation from love to love. This is an invitation from love to love. I love asking you to love. I am love asking you to love. I am love asking you to love. I love asking you to love because you're love. I love all of y'all if I didn't have to do nothing for you. (laughs) (coughs) If it was effortless. I love all of you if it didn't have any requirements. The problem is, I don't know about you, but in the past, whenever someone said they loved me, it usually required a lot. It was kind of high maintenance. <laughs> me too, by the way. I'm not excluding myself from anything that I say. I'm very much included. <laughs> I've actually had women call me high maintenance. <laughs> no. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> Who could be easier than me, man? <laughs> Who could be easier to be with than somebody that's not asking you to do anything for them? Okay. But I've been called high maintenance. Interesting. Interesting. Have you ever been called high maintenance? Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever felt like high maintenance? Yeah. 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 You always have maintenance to somebody who is sacrificing for you. So someone who thinks that they're doing something that they don't want to do in order to have you, they're going to call you high maintenance. But you only have maintenance because they're doing what they don't want to do. <laughs> if I was doing what I wanted to do for you, that would be easy. Mm-hmm. If I'm always trying to do something for you that I really don't want to do, <laughs> then I'm going to call you high maintenance. Even if you're saying, I don't want you to do anything for me. <laughs> but if you want me to do something for you, and you're trying not to ask me to do anything, you see what I'm saying? Because I'm not asking you anything, so you gonna try, but you really want to. Then it, I'm high maintenance at that point. Because you really would like to have more happening than this happening the way you want it to happen. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> a person always seems high maintenance when you're trying to act in a way that's not natural to you because you're trying to have them. I gotcha. So, compromise. Compromise the the bane of a happy life. <laughs> That's a bold statement. Because compromise, compromise means that you're just selling for a little bit of what you want. So therefore, you're full of resentment for the part you're not getting that you want. <laughs> so compromise it doesn't work. It just builds resentment. That's deep, isn't it? Yeah, it is. That's so opposite to what we've been taught in the world, isn't it? Yeah. That's why you know it'll work. <laughs> That's how you know anything will work. If it's the opposite of what hasn't worked, it probably might work. So could the key to happiness be for you to do everything the opposite to what you've been taught if you're miserable? Yep. I remember in Seinfeld when George did that. 
I don't know if y'all know that episode where George decided he was going to do everything the opposite of his own natural instincts and everything he would normally do, and it was the best day he ever had in his life. Everything went right for him. I thought that was classic truth uh, uh, TV show, you know. So if you're pretty miserable right now, do it, George. <laughs> do something different from the way you're doing it because the definition of insanity is what? Doing, doing the same, same thing, thing same, same, same way, way, over and over again, and then you think you're going to get a different result. Mm, okay. Next question. Not really a question. It really spirit is taking, it's really taking a lot of pressure off us. It's saying, uh, this is an invitation from love to love. Do you know that you're only, you only need to be open and allow giving and receiving as one to take place? Do you know that you only need to be open and allow giving and receiving as one to take place? Do you know that you only need to be open and allow giving and receiving as one to take place? Do you realize that the invitation only asks that you be unoccupied with the old so that the new may arrive? <laughs> Do you realize that the invitation only asks that you be unoccupied with the old so that the new may arrive? I want something new in my life. You need to get unoccupied with the old, brother. <laughs> you still caught up on the old, expect, expecting the new. Mm. The invitation to happiness, do you know that it only asks that you, do you know that it only asks that, do you know that it only asks that, do you know that it only asks that you listen to your heart? Now this is deep. Mm. Listen to your heart, and then the second part says, and let yourself be heard. Mm -hmm. That's deep. Listen to yourself and let yourself, listen to your heart and let yourself be heard. What a statement. All you need to do is to listen to your heart and let yourself be heard. All you have to do is listen to your heart and listen to yourself. The best advice I've ever received has been when I've talked to myself and really paid attention to what I felt. Because I like to talk to myself and see what I'm thinking when I'm not around anyone. Mm -hmm. Because I believe when I'm not around anyone is when I'm being the most honest about what I think I want at any given time. And when I'm around other people, I have a tendency to let them influence me or um, think I need to take what they're saying into more consideration or do something that I think that they know. Oh, I'm just picking up their thoughts and all of a sudden I'm acting out somebody else's dream, somebody else's fantasy. So when I'm alone, I pay attention to what I'm feeling and I even try to jot it down and try to act from that. And then before I enter a room like this, I try to remember what I was thinking and how I was feeling before I came in. Mm -hmm. So I can get more in touch with what's going on within me and what I'm picking up from everybody around me because we really have one mind. We're really all joined. We're really all connected. There are no private thoughts. Everybody in here knows what everybody else is thinking, but we're pretending that we don't because we really don't want to hear that insane stuff. <laughs> and then some of the stuff we hear is exactly what we want to hear. But all of us know exactly what all of us are thinking right now. We're either thinking something that makes us feel connected or we're thinking something that makes us feel separate. That's what everybody in this room is thinking. Now it doesn't matter what form and flavor it's coming in, but those are the two things that's happening all the time. You're either thinking something that makes you feel joined, or you're thinking something that makes you feel separated, or you're thinking something that makes you feel loved, or you're thinking something that makes you feel fear, or you're thinking something that makes you feel peaceful, or you're thinking something that makes you feel like you're in conflict. All of us are doing that. What we call our individuality is just our individual way of scaring ourselves. <laughs> it's the way you do it in your own special flavor. But you're doing the same thing I'm doing. Either making yourself feel good or you're making yourself feel bad. And you know it's the thoughts in your own mind that's doing it because nobody else knows what you're thinking until you tell them. And since you don't know until I tell you what's going on, then it's got to be going on inside my mind and nowhere else, so you wouldn't have to tell me. So you know you're making up how you feel, because I don't even know what you're thinking right now. So if you're sad, it's certainly not something I'm saying. It's something you're telling yourself, because I don't even know what it is until you tell me. <laughs> 
And the Course teaches that if something is real, everybody is experiencing it, not just you. That that's the definition of something that's real, is that it's shared by all of us. And if it's not shared by all of us, the truth teaches it's not real. Deep. Mm. Mm. There is no mold, there is no form, there is no stock answer. <laughs> Do you know that you are a thought of God? That's deep too. You are, a, you are an idea. I thought I was human, but the truth is I'm an idea. Wow. Something thought you up. But it was the Big Bang. Something thought that up. <laughs> That's what the truth is saying. You didn't, we didn't create ourselves. We did not create ourselves. We did not create ourselves. You are an idea. And so when I first heard that God was an idea, that somehow sounded less real to me at first. A nebulous. Anybody have that experience when I said God is an idea? Mm -hmm. that that sounds like somehow not as solid or real mm -hmm. but the truth is an idea is realer than the form it takes you know the idea behind this pen created this pen if I break this pen the idea of a pen has created millions of other pens that I could use when this one runs out you know how you just get rid of the pen that's what, you, that's what you're going to do one day with your body isn't that deep when their body is used and you through using it this time around, you just you just let it go, just like you let the pen go. You are an idea in the mind of God. So the idea of you is realer than your body. Just like the idea of the pen is realer than this pen. This a pen, it breaks the idea of a pen makes another pen. This is just as much physical as this is. So if there's an idea behind this, like there's an idea behind that, and the idea behind me creates more experiences, just like the idea behind this creates more pens. In other words, the idea of you is eternal. The form that you choose to take is temporary. The idea of a pen is eternal. This form of the pen is temporary. Is that deep? Yeah. Isn't that way deep? Yeah. Yeah. It should kind of shift your consciousness a little bit or make you go, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> One or the other. What's the point of me saying that? Then whatever you want to manifest in life is just a matter of an idea. And that we, anything you want to experience in your life, all you have to do is share the idea of it. The idea of the idea. So you want to be around people that you can share the ideas that you'd like to see take form in your life without being attacked or made to feel guilty or like you're crazy or that it can't happen or that it's not okay because the opposing thought neutralizes what you're trying to manifest. So you want to have a clear cut idea without any opposing thoughts to have it manifest quickly. We have a role in that idea. We have a complete role in that idea since we are joined and we are uh, uh, connected and we are, uh, as I'm trying to think of your exact words, but I can't, um, uh, part of uh, God's like fingertips and things like that. We are, we are part of the idea, we are in, uh, part of the machine that is the idea maker. It's actually, it, 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 the, the truth would say we sense. are an extension of the idea. Okay. Yeah, we are, we, the idea had an idea, you know, the idea is still in the mind that thought of it, right? Mm -hmm. If I have the idea still in my mind, right? So if you're an idea, you've got to still be inside the mind that thought of you. See, that's too sane. Mm -hmm. that's, too, that's too sane. It's got to be more complicated than that. <laughs> I have an idea, it's in my mind. It doesn't leave my mind, right? Mm -hmm. Where well, you are an idea, and I'm an idea, so we've got to still be inside the mind that thought us up. <laughs> and still connected to it. Just like your ideas are connected to your mind, we're ideas connected to the mind that created us. <laughs> Why don't I believe that? Why don't I experience that? Because of other ideas I have. <laughs> Suppose 
you are so unlimited. Now check this out. Suppose you are so unlimited that you could experience anything you thought of. And suppose you had the idea, what would it be like to be separate? <laughs> Poof! Here we are. But if I'm going to be separate, I need something to be separate in. Poof! Here it is. If I'm, and if I'm going to really have the experience 100%, I need to forget I chose it. Poof! We have. How can I forget that I chose it? I blame you. <laughs> and it's now your fault that I'm going through everything I'm going through in my life so I can have a separate experience. So what's happened to us? Well, a separated state where you feel totally unconscious is completely painful, broken into by periods in which the pain seems to be gone. So you reach a level and you reach a limit in how much pain and fear that you can tolerate and you decide to move toward oneness and awakening again and you call it, now I'm on my spiritual path. I have decided to remember who I am again so that I can really be happy. Because I know I'm unhappy because I'm being unnatural to myself. If you're miserable, you're just being unnatural. <clears throat> Wow. Wow. Mm. So, that was catching us up. <laughs> <laughs> any questions or any comments <coughs> about anything that has been said? Yes. Uh, the difference or is the same of an idea and the essence of God, essence of the original. Yeah, we're, we're like digital copies. That's right. But, the, the Core says it works like this. You were created and you have a creation, but you didn't create that which created you. And it says our error is that we think we created our creator. And that when our creator disagrees with our perception of what our creator is, we say our creator is wrong. In other words, we all have our idea of what God is. So if the creator did try to tell us what the creator is, <laughs> and we were going to play that game, then we would say, nah. Because <laughs> I've already decided what's true. And then the truth says, well, how can you tell whether or not what you believe is true or not? Does it last? If it lasts, it's real. If it ends, it's not. If it's real, it never ends. It just expands. So if I got a real love for you, it should be doing this. So it is changing. It's getting better. That's the kind of change you want, <laughs> where it's just more love. If it's not real, it seems to start off like this, and then it goes like that. <laughs> Till it gets to the point, I just love you just a little bit. <laughs> and sometimes it goes like this. <laughs> I have that I have that pattern where people start out really liking me a lot. <laughs> then they see that I'm gonna do what I say I'm gonna do when they don't. They get them. It's like a fish story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like it's like freedom is frightening to people who need a lot of control in order to feel safe. A, a person who's free is that is the scariest experience they could give themselves. If you are afraid to trust, and your idea of happiness is trying to control everything around you, a person who would choose for their own freedom and to do what they choose to do would be the most frustrating person you would ever come across in your life. But fortunately, there are plenty of people who want to be controlled temporarily. <laughs> and they'll be glad to help you out. <laughs> but you're going to pay because they're going to blame you for what's going on because mm -hmm. you're the <coughs> one in charge. So they say. So it seems, does that make sense? If I, sub if I submit to you and I put you in charge, 
then whatever goes on is it's, it's your responsibility. So, mm -hmm. so in a way, it looks like it's a rough position to be in, but actually, I put myself in a position where I don't have to feel responsible for anything that happens to me. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are like that. But the problem with that is when something don't go right, they're going to blame you. They're going to attack you. Mm -hmm. so, so all control freaks out there, be aware <laughs> that the people that you seem to be controlling will also be the ones that will see you as the one at fault for whatever happens or doesn't happen. Things work better when you let go of your control and let love take over. So I get up in the morning and say, love, God, live your life through me today. God, live your life through me today. Love, live your life through me today. Everything that will bring happiness and joy and reality and abundance and everything cool, I want you to use me today. That which knows more than me, that knows exactly what would make this an incredible day for me, I want you to take over. And so it, it, gave, it, and it said to me, recognize misery and go the other way. It's like little, it's tell you little stuff like that. Recognize misery and then go the other way. That's if you're cool. walking down a path and a bear shows up, you probably go the other way. You don't stop and analyze it. You don't sit down and analyze, right? You just go the other way. What we do is we recognize misery and then we stay there and study it and analyze it, right? That's what we do. So let's take chapter 27. Um, it says, the first thing it says is, we return now to what your being is. I'm going to take this kind of slow, because it really don't matter <clears throat> how far we go. Um, feel free to crash on the floor, man. You don't have to stand up, you know. I'm a flow person, personally, you know. I like to get on the floor. I don't know how, how anybody missing the opportunity to be on the floor. <laughs> but, I, but it happens. And we put all the heat out, so we generate now our own. Okay, you have attached being to being human. You have attached being to being human. In your quest to identify yourself, in your quest to find out who you are, it says you simply narrowed yourself to what's visible to you and what's describable to you. We're trying to find ourselves, so we keep narrowing ourselves to what we can see and what can be described to us. Mm -hmm. Thus, you have identified death as the only means by which to reach oneness with your Father or Creator. In other words, when I die, I'll then be connected to my Creator. Anybody familiar with that? Mm -hmm. After I die, that's when everything's going to be all right. Now, I'm going to say that to you again. I want you to hear what you hear that. After you die, after you cease to exist, you really have a cool existence. <laughs> after you cease to exist, then you will have a really cool existence. That's the same idea as after I die, everything's going to be all right. <laughs> Knowing that such oneness is not compatible with the human nature you ascribe to yourself. In this one era do all errors lie. For what quest can be fulfilled when the only answer to life seems to be death? <laughs> this is why, even if it just sounds crazy, it should be refreshing. <laughs> It still beats the stuff we hear every day. You know what I'm saying? We ought to be thankful for that, whether we believe this stuff or not. It's like, wow, I'm just glad to hear something different. That's the way I feel about it. It just turns me on to hear something interesting. It says, it says, that is why and how my death and resurrection provided an answer and an end to the need for answers. Your being here is not futile. Your being here is not without purpose. You have a purpose. You have a role to play that no one else but you can play. We need you. 
I need you to be you. Because you could do you better than I could do you. Even though sometimes I like to try to do you. <laughs> I'm so cute. Oh, yeah. I'm cute. <laughs> you like chocolate? <laughs> what? Nothing. We were in the body store together before we were born. You had a chance to choose a chocolate body. You chose that one. <laughs> I was showing out. <laughs> I tried to take it back, but they wouldn't accept no refund. So I'm here. I'm here now. All right. I'm telling you. You. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell you something radical. This is gonna sound crazy, but I want you to check deep within your heart when I say this. Check deep within your soul, because I. T I have to say crazy stuff for it to be new. <clears throat> because new means different. Deep down in your heart, you know. You chose your sex, you chose your race, yes. you chose the general social and economic conditions in which you were born, you chose your parents, all so that you could set up the best possible scenario for you to come into your power and your awakening and your happiness. The way you set it up is the perfect way for you to reach fulfillment. But nobody tells us that. It's deep. Just, just be with that. You don't have to believe it. Just, just be with that. What, does that sound more loving than to think that you're here because somebody had some good and not so good sex? <clears throat> and now, poof, here you are trying to make it. Think about it. Or could this all have a purpose that we've forgotten about? Could it have a deeper meaning than what it appears? Could your life really have a purpose? And could you really have, could you really have a special gift and a special function that nobody else on the face of the planet can fulfill but you? And, and the way that you are kept from being trapped in this experience is through the gift of dissatisfaction. Because dissatisfaction is your homing beacon that keeps you from ever settling for less than what you know you deserve. So thanks to dissatisfaction, you'll never limit yourself to something that doesn't bring you joy. And your dissatisfaction is letting you know that you are not being natural to yourself yet, so keep on moving on forward. It's keeping you from being trapped in something that doesn't satisfy. And that'd be deep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's why if you're in a relationship, you're dissatisfied because you know that a relationship that's right for you should feel fulfilling to you. You know that. And that's why you're dissatisfied. So it's saying, but what we haven't realized <clears throat> is that we are the ones that are choosing it all. So that relationship that you would like, that whatever it is that you would like, it doesn't require anything really but a willingness to make a new choice. And then being patient enough to know that what you are experiencing now is the result of other such choices in the present moment. So for a while, it'll look like what you are experiencing is very different from what you want to experience when you first change your mind. Because you're already dealing with the results of the choices you've already made. They're still physically there. You're coming up with a new idea of what you like to experience. So for a while, it'll look like you're looking at the stuff you used to make for yourself. You see, that? You see what I'm saying? I used to give myself relationships that are fearful. I'm now choosing for relationships that are loving. So for a while, until I allow the loving relationship to manifest, I may still see the ghost of the relationships that were not joyful for me, to, for me because that was the result of the way I used to choose. So if you're ready to make a really different life for yourself right now, you must not compare 
the new idea that you want to see in your life against what you are experiencing right now that's a result of what you used to choose? Will you let it discourage you? Does that, is everybody with me on that one? Residue. The residue. The after, uh, the course of love calls it the after image. The after image. You know, it's like back in the day when, when you cut off a TV, it would take a few seconds for the image to fade from the screen. Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I still have one. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so when you look at the things in your life that look, seem like they're making you unhappy right now, tell yourself you're just looking at the after image of the choices you used to make. But right now you're making a new one. So don't get caught up in the stuff that looks like it's making you so unhappy right now. If, you, if you're making a choice for your peace and your happiness right this moment, because this is the only time there is, then everything else is just an image of the way you used to choose in a moment before this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's great to know. Mm -hmm. Then you won't be fooled, Earl, when you think you see the past showing up again in some kind of way. It's an at, your 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 bank account is an after image. <laughs> mm. Everything that's making you unhappy is nothing but an image that's fading away because you changed your mind and now you want to love yourself. Right? That's why we're here. So in this moment, right now, we've made a new choice. And this is where our power is, right now. So everything else is just the result of a decision made earlier. These pants are on me because of a decision made earlier. This sweater is on me because of a decision made er earlier. My bank account is the way it is because of a decision made earlier. But now I'm making a new decision. And the present is the point of power. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> this is really good, starring the Course of Love class. <laughs> mm. Your being here is not futile or without purpose. Your being is itself all purpose, all honor, and all glory. Oh, let me say that to you. You are all purpose. You are all honor. You are all glory. Now, does it matter whether you believe me or not? Not at all. Because something can be true even if you don't believe it. So your belief is never necessary for the truth. It's true whether you believe it or not. You are honorable and you are glory and you're powerful. I don't care if you believe me or not. I just need to remember it. So even if you are playing victim, I don't believe it. I'm still seeing you as a powerful being who's choosing things, whether you believe it or not. And I'm gonna treat you like you're powerful, <laughs> that you're not a victim. Mm. Wow, I could just decide that you and me are cool. You see what I'm saying? I could just decide I like him. And, and I can make it not dependent on anything he does or whether or not he believes me. That's how powerful we are. The only power we have left, <laughs> according to the Course, is the power of decision. That's the last power we left. We down to the last power. <laughs> you got your little power bag. You down to your last power in your power bag. And it's the power of decision. You can decide tonight that you're going to see it right. It's a lot of power. You can decide tonight you're going to see it right. You got that kind of power. Mm -hmm. Or you could decide tonight you're not ready yet. Mm -hmm. Whew. But since we believe in time, why waste it going nowhere? Mm 
That's true. <laughs> Since we do believe in time, why don't we use it to bring us some joy? Precisely. Mm. Well, I'm guilty and I'm sinful and I'm bad and I'm not <laughs> worth it, anything and nothing goes right for me and my mom and daddy mistreated me and my teacher <laughs> didn't like me and they dropped me on my head when I was a baby. <laughs> I just want to let y'all know that's the reason why my life isn't working. I fell out of the crib. Using excuses. <laughs> <sighs> so forgive yourself. Say serve some purpose. It's all good. I'm ready to let my story go now. Whatever my story was, the poor black kid from the South, I got to let it go now. Because in this moment, I can choose to love you and to love me and to claim my power and get in touch with my source and let my life be different. I don't care what I went through before I got right here. Mm, but for a while I'm gonna see after images of the way I used to be and I've got to let it not fool me and make me think I haven't made this new decision. Because just because I decided this right now doesn't mean there's any more money in my bank account. But there will be. Especially after the love offering. <laughs> <laughs> because I deserve to receive just like you do. That's why. You did your thing today, whatever that was, and you're expecting to receive for that, and you feel like it's okay. I deserve to receive also. The only difference, if there is a difference, is that <clears throat> it's okay whatever you give a don't. But I doubt that that'd be true if at the end of the week and you've been working and your boss walked up to you and said, I'm just going to give you this. And you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Think about it. But that's the way I live. Because I'm trying to practice trust in the universe mm -hmm. to provide if I do what I came here to do. It's a different kind mm -hmm. of curriculum. Mm -hmm. That's why I do classes on the love offering. Mm. Because I don't want any limits on what I can receive. <laughs> but I won't let it come to me unless I believe I deserve it. So therefore I have to give at a level that I think it's okay. And that's the way, it's, that's the way it works. Or else I won't even let it happen. And that's preparing you to get to the point that things will start to come to you more than you think you deserve. Because it'll be gifted to you. Why? Because you are all purpose, all honor, all glory. There is no being apart from being. There is no being alive and being dead. There is no being human or being divine. There is only being. I am being right now. You are being right now. One of the strangest things that happened to me after studying this kind of stuff for over 30 years is that I started to lose my gender identification. I started to experience myself beyond the concept of being a man. I found out I was something more than a man. And that a man was just one of the ways I was choosing to express my being. So sometimes I would be a black man. That's one of the ways my being expresses itself, but it's not who I am. Wow. We are being right now. That's how powerful you are. You be. Like my man Shakespeare said, what? To, to be, be or not, or not to, to be. be. <clears throat> that is the question. Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. um, would, would somebody be willing to go down to the sanctuary for me and look right under the podium there's the love offering bag? I forgot. I, oh, I forget about it. That's a good thing. Uh -huh. It lets me know it's not all about the money because I forget it. Um, because I knew I could never be free unless I made a connection with that which created me That's so right. that I could really be wherever I needed to be. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yes. 
Yeah. So the idea of truly being free and depending on anything outside of yourself is a contrary belief. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to make it, can you imagine how many people I've seen in 30 years? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many people have been in rooms like this with me? How many teachers have showed up, have shown up over 30 years to help me learn? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I had to believe in something beyond that because people come and go and it's rightly so but you have to be open to what you want coming to you in the form that is easiest to get to you now and the easiest way for something to get to you may not be the way you thought of hmm. I say it again the easiest way for something to get to you may not be the way you think. So you want to ask for things to come to you in ways beyond what you can even imagine when you ask for something. Don't limit your receiving to what you can think of because it might not be the fastest way for it to get to you. You just ask for it to get to you the fastest way it can. So I would love for love and abundance and joy and peace and happiness to get to me the fastest way it can. Now how can I guarantee that that would happen according to the course? How can I guarantee that that would happen? I would say I want your happiness to get to you as fast as it can. Because it's not until I want it for you as much as I want it for me, that it's a real request. Precise. Because the spirit that created us is not more concerned with my happiness and personal interest than yours. Mm -hmm. So a conscious being, or who's trying to be, always asks for everybody else's happiness to be included in their request for their own. Mm -hmm. An unconscious person who is also innocent it's always a person that's caught up in their own personal interests and personal desires to the exclusion of everyone else. Mm -hmm. That's why they have to do it by themselves. Because right. they didn't include anyone else. So of course they've got to work harder, struggle harder, try to figure it all out and manipulate it into being. Because you really are on your own. Because you left everybody else out. So how do I allow my personal desires to manifest? I ask that every personal desire that I have be used for the benefit of everyone. I sure would like to have me a motorcycle. <laughs> I'd like me having a motorcycle to somehow be used for the healing of the planet and to help everyone. And you may find yourself riding a motorcycle to a class like this. You see what I'm saying? Whatever your personal desires are, you want to raise your level of consciousness by always wanting those desires to also be an invitation of love to love. <sighs> hmm. So I would like you to acknowledge yourself right now for just listening to this much. You know, you don't have to believe that. Don't forget, you don't have to believe that. You don't have to believe that. All right, so I'd like to uh, thank you for sharing because it allows us to be here at the church and support what, what they're doing here. And thank you for personally. And so would you mind passing the bag around, brother? Um, you're not going to take yourself to the new level by hearing this one time. And you want to always side with something that's trying to support you and having what you want. <laughs> that's just a little tip. You got to, you know... Now, if you don't think you deserve it, or if you've made up your own plan and you didn't hear me say your plan, then it's very difficult to either remember what I said or understand what I said. Because most people are listening to hear their plan repeated back. So when you don't say what they are looking to hear because they've decided how it's supposed to happen for them, it, then that's when people go unconscious. Because they're listening for what they've decided should happen. 
Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why sometimes if you find yourself getting weary in here, or wanting to go to sleep, or wanting to pass out, it's because what you're hearing is different from the way you made it up, <laughs> and so it's hard to it's hard to stay conscious. Or if you like to struggle, it's very difficult to hear things that say there's a way for you to have things easily. Mm -hmm. So if you're one of these people who believe no pain, no gain, or you feel really guilty and unworthy, it's very difficult to hear loving thoughts. So I want to acknowledge you that if you're right t tonight, you're kind of feeling like, you know, you, you, you're not as happy as you could be right now, but you were willing to come here and listen. That, that takes a lot of spiritual strength, and I want to acknowledge you for that. And then those of you who were feeling really good when you came in, I want to thank you for being on the maintenance program mm -hmm. <clears throat> because that's what you are doing. Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm feeling good and I want to keep feeling good. Well, the way for me to keep feeling good is I need to keep hearing stuff that makes me feel mm -hmm. good. I'm sad. I'm unhappy. Uh-oh, I need another way of looking at things. So I need to join with people who want to be happy right now so that it that help me change my mind. So I'm coming because I have a call for love and I want to remember that I'm loved. What's my job? My job is to get out of the way, let the love come through me as best it can without trying to get anything while at the same time realizing that what's going on with you is what's going on with me and what needs to be healed in you is what needs to be healed in me. So therefore I'm grateful that you're here because you're giving me multiplied healing. Can you imagine how much of my own stuff has been changed in all these years and all the people when they were all bringing to me stuff I need to take a look at about myself? <laughs> You know, that's deep. Mm. You know, when most people just choose one person to try to do that with, I, I wanted thousands. <laughs> <laughs> because I am ready to be happy for real. So I'm not going to give you a hard time. <sighs> Isn't that a great plan? Mm, yeah. I'm ready to be happy, so I'm not going to give you a hard time. I believe I need mm. to suffer, so I'm going to give you a hard time. So that you can attack me. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> because I think I deserve to suffer. Yeah, so I'm going to pick fight with everybody. I'm going to get everybody to hate me on my job mm -hmm. because I hate me and I want them to treat me the way I feel about myself. Mm -hmm. The murderer wants to be murdered. Mm -hmm. The murderer wants to be murdered. Mm -hmm. The attacker wants to be attacked. Mm -hmm. The happy person wants to be happy. The loving person wants to experience love. The person who gives a hug wants to receive one. <laughs> The person who reminds you of how cool you are, they want to remember how cool they are. That's why they're doing it. It's a good, it's a great system. It's a great system. So you got a bunch of people in this room that you could wish happiness for right now and therefore guarantee it for yourself. Most of them you don't know, so there actually is nobody to forgive. Which is, a, which is a benefit right there. You don't know me, so therefore you don't have nothing against me, so you could really wish me well without any negative energy coming my way and really support my happiness more than somebody who thinks they know me. So the stranger could actually heal you better than the person that you think you know because they don't have anything to hold against you. There have been no disappointments with them. That's too easy. <laughs> that, that's too easy. I can't believe this stuff. And he's black too? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare tell your relatives. <laughs> 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 oh, I love how people get really uptight when you mention race stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, this is a costume. I had a costume on my costume last Friday. Some of you had costumes on your costume. This ain't you. You have a special gift that no one else can give but you. There is no competition for you. I'm going to let go of my desire to try to control you and make you act out my script so that who you are can really show up because who you are really is the gift and who you really are is unique and unusual and there's nobody else like you. So you won't be boring if I stop trying to control you. You'll keep me endlessly fascinated. You're only bored because you're trying to, <laughs> like the truth of your own, they're boring you because you have labeled them and categorized them and put them up on the shelf. Exactly. 
And now you think you know them, and now you're bored with them. No, you're bored with your concept of them. Mm -hmm. Believe me, everybody else not experiencing them the way you are. And you do that to your, uh, to, about yourself. Oh, yourself. absolutely. I'm right I'm now trying to act, let go of the I'm idea boring. I have of who Earl is. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm in the process right now show. going, I don't know the thing I am. I don't know who I am. I don't know what I am. I want love to show me. So I can have some new loving experiences. I got to take the concepts off me. Mm -hmm. The easiest way to do that is to leave everybody you know. But most people can't pull that off. <laughs> Too attached. But there are people who do it all the time. They just leave. They just go somewhere else. That's right. And they can, and whoever they show up as, that's who the people there think they are. <laughs> but try to be new around people you know. It's harder. They won't accept it. Because you've been fulfilling some kind of a role for them that they're not ready to give up yet in most cases. Exactly. So I'm not saying you have to leave anybody. I'm just saying, just saying. That as soon as you change your idea of yourself, your life will change automatically. And don't be fooled by some of the old stuff still sticking around for a little while while the new stuff get ready, is ready to come in. Because you are beings and you are glorious and I honor you. So that's it. I appreciate y'all. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Woo! So we give it to each other. is to be yourselves more. Cool. May the course be with you. Awesome. Hugs are available. I love hugs.